Hello, welcome to sleephypnosisweekly.com. My name is Jason Newland. This is Deep, and what is it? Yeah, Sleep Hypnosis Weekly. I do too many podcasts, I lose track of what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing, I just forget the names sometimes. Plus, I don't know what I'm doing. Well, maybe a little bit. So, this particular podcast is a regular weekly session. And it's released every Friday. Now... A little bit late because it is Saturday, but it is still Friday somewhere, I think. In fact, I'm pretty certain, yeah. So in America, it's still Friday in some parts. So technically, this is still on a Friday. So I'm kind of, I'm clinging to that. What I thought I would do is, excuse me, what I thought I would do is based upon, uh, his name's Brad, someone uh, told me or asked me if I could do a recording that would help them with an active mind, you know, the thoughts and stuff when he's lying in bed or when we are lying in bed, uh, you, me, um, because we all have it, I guess, we all have thoughts, that's because we have brains which are active and healthy and it's natural to have thoughts Um, but there's a limit you know it's natural to feel hungry but not all the time it's natural to want to go to the toilet but not all the time you know so there's there's a time and a place and Firstly, if you've got an active mind and you're thinking about things when you're, you know, lying in bed trying to go to sleep, the first thing I would say is don't swear at yourself. Don't have a go at yourself. Don't put yourself down or get angry about it because having an active mind means that your mind you're creative you're you know you're intelligent so first of all don't have a go at yourself for thinking because thinking is an amazing thing it's an amazing gift to be able to think and to be able to problem solve and all the things that maybe your brain is doing at that time. There's other ways to think about it also. And I know that not all the thoughts that you have when you're in bed are ones that perhaps you would even want. Um, maybe issues overthinking is something that we tend to say that we do and again I think there's that situation where we're kind of having a go at ourselves again kind of putting blame where blame doesn't need to be 
uh, condemning ourselves, uh, be just being horrible to ourselves, telling ourselves off. You think too much. I think too much. No, it's it's okay. That's just what's going on at the moment. So it's important to start this and every every situation in your life, but to start this and every time you go to bed with remembering to be kind to yourself. Remembering that you're just you're a human being. If anyone should be, if you should receive love from anybody, it should be you. You know, and I say should. And I'm not, you know, I've I've read enough self help books and self development books to know that, you know, I shouldn't be using the word should. I shouldn't be using the word. That's ironic, isn't it? But. But sometimes shoulds are worth, you know, it's a must. Maybe not a should, it's a must. You must be kind to yourself. And I would say you must acknowledge that your brain is active. Because your brain is active at that time. Because you have a brain that functions really well. But in the same way, just because you've got a television doesn't mean it has to be on. Just because you've got a laptop doesn't mean it has to be turned on. The light doesn't have to be turned on. The light switch, you know, clicks that thing off. So just because you've got something, you're laying in bed, you've got legs or arms or parts of your body that you can move, but you choose not to move them. You've got eyes with eyelids. You could open and close them, open and close them continuously. And I'm not talking about blinking, I'm talking about, you know, purposely open and closing them. But you choose not to. You got a jaw and a mouth where you could you could open you could open widely and close clench it. And open widely and clench it closed again and continuously do that. But you don't. Because you don't have to. It's a choice. It's there if you want to do that. And, you know, it's quite handy if you're eating something big. You know, like a big, massive sandwich or hamburger or something. So open your mouth wide and then clinch it closed. And That's eating. That's not something that you would be doing whilst lying down in bed. There's lots of things you could be doing, but you're not doing. So just because you have a brain, a mind that thinks, or that can think, doesn't mean that you have to. And maybe part of the reason why it seems so busy, the brain, the mind, whatever you want to call it, is because all other activity has slowed down. And therefore you're more focused, more aware of the thoughts because your body's not moving. You're visually not being stimulated. Your ears are not being stimulated by sound. 
you know you're not eating you're not your taste buds are not being stimulated I would say your your smell's not being stimulated but I like to fart when I'm in bed so my my <laughs> imagine if it would turn on I really thought this was so professional now now he's talking about farting again whoa but seriously, the you know the senses are just pretty much reduced to nothing. Especially if you're sitting, you're lying down. Some people have to sit up in bed due to physical issues or illness or disability, whatever it might be. So you know, I try to be interchange because just to assume that everybody's sleeping, lying down is not correct but just like when I do relaxation it's hard you know not everybody has all their limbs but you know I still mention the limbs and but I'm aware of that so we're all different we're all in different situations but we'll just for example say you're lying down in a, a dark room you know the Lights are off, curtains are drawn, closed. Uh, it's, maybe it's dark outside. It might not be dark outside in the summer. We have long days. But, you know, it might be bedtime. You might, you might have an early night. You might have a job where you have to get up in the morning very early. So you have to be in bed by nine but it's still fairly dark and there's not much stimulation occurring which means you're going to be more it's more noticeable the sounds that you hear when you do hear them like the birds in the background but more noticeable is the thoughts just because everything else is kind of quieting down it's exactly the same thing as if you if you've got a candle you know in the room on a table <clears throat> you've got a television on you've got a laptop on you've got music playing You've got the curtains drawn so there's light outside. Uh, birds singing, windows open, you know. The smell of curry because you've just been cooking. You're not going to notice that candle very much. It's going to be there. You lit it, it's safe. It's, you know, but it's, it's just there. But if you drew the curtains, close the windows turn the television off got rid of all the dishes or you know from the curry put them in the kitchen close the living room door so you can no longer smell any curries other than apart from the smells that you produce yourself and you get rid of you know put the laptop close that down so it's now dark in the room what are you going to notice that candle the thing that you didn't really take any notice of before you might, it might be a scented candle and you just had it there because maybe who knows I don't know maybe you've had a visitor that had smelly socks so you had to put a scented candle to try and get rid of the odour you can love the friend but you don't have to love the smell that could be a, a catchy uh, logo couldn't it 
I picked just a, an advert with a, two men and the men, one man leaving. A one man sitting there with his socks, his shoes off his socks and flies are buzzing around his feet because his feet are so pongy and his socks are so pongy. And then the other bloke, the other man lights the candle, puts it on the table and then they say, you can love your friend but you don't have to love their socks, smelly socks. She got thoughts that are just as pointless as the one that I just said there. Thoughts going in your mind when you're laying in the bed. Stuff that may be... Some, some of it's important. That's another thing that we do. Oh, I'll keep thinking about this stuff. Uh, either we exaggerate the importance or we underestimate the importance but either way we kind of have a go at ourselves we tell ourselves off we're aggressive negative towards ourselves when we're trying to sleep oh damn this thoughts I don't want to think about it ah which is fair enough but the more you say you don't want to think about something the more likelihood you're going to think about it you know if you're hungry and you keep telling yourself don't think about pizza don't think about pizza of course if you don't like pizza you wouldn't say that would you but you know what are you going to think about you're going to think about pizza So the thing is, you're lying there and you've got these thoughts. So what do you do with them? What do you do with these thoughts? What do you need to do with them? Are you really prepared to let thoughts get in the way of you having a good night's sleep a decent rest something that you've earned because no matter what we do in life what your job is whether you work whether you don't work whether you care for somebody whether you just getting through life looking after yourself a bit like what I'm doing really whatever you do you deserve a nice rest a nice sleep as a reward at the end of the day whatever the end of the day is for you whether it's early evening or early morning you deserve that rest you deserve that sleep uninterrupted by thoughts because you think about it when we go to sleep it's not just it's not like being anaesthetized in a hospital you know before an operation you know you go to sleep and then you wake up it's like it could have been two seconds ago It's not like that. When we're asleep, we're aware of stuff. We're thinking when we're asleep. We're dreaming. The mind is very active during sleep. The mind processes what's happened during the day when we're asleep. The mind processes thoughts, memories, organises stuff. Look, uh, to be fair, things that we don't even know. Now there are sleep experts as far as like what the brain does. It's you know, but even experts don't know everything. 
when it comes to the brain. It, you know, even experts will say we've it's the brain is you could equate it to the ocean. You know, I think the ocean only about five percent has actually been explored. Not properly explored of the ocean. Sounds like complete lies, doesn't it? I'm sure, more than five percent, but there's a lot of water and a lot of ocean. So the brain and its potential, and exactly what's going on inside the brain and what it's doing, is not always. I don't think we need to know. So one of those things, I think, where you just allow the process to happen, because the process is going to happen anyway. I seem to have a woodpecker that seems to have moved in to my wall cavity, which is weird. Anyway. And we can focus as much as we want on the digestive system of our body. But it's not really going to make much difference. The body is still going to continue to digest food. Of course, you know, there's things we can do to improve that using hypnosis or suggestion, you know, diet and all those things. Of course, there's ways we can improve our digestion. But the natural system within our body, like the heart, the lungs, the blood vessels, all that stuff, the skin, the healing, the growth, you know, of our body and the bones and all those things, the hairs growing, the nails growing, that's happening outside of our awareness. So we don't need to really take any notice of it. I can honestly say I've never, ever focused on the growth of a fingernail. I've never focused on the process of a fingernail growing. I've never been that bored. So why focus on the process of sleep? Why focus? Because otherwise it becomes something separate. So if you focus on one bit, the bit before sleep, and you focus on the bit after sleep, and then you focus on the bit during sleep, you're breaking it all up. And when I say before sleep, I mean that little period, that little, you know, five minutes or ten minutes or whatever. And then after sleep, that five or ten minutes, if you don't have to get out of bed quickly, you might be lying there. I know I do sometimes. I'll just be just li lying there, yawning. Just comfortable and relaxed. And perhaps like visually in your mind, you can start pushing them together to where they should be. Because they are joined together. The beginning, the middle, and the end. It's all joined. It's like a bit of spaghetti. It might be bendy once you boil it, you know, but it's still one big bit of spaghetti. And that's what the beginning the middle and the end, they're all together. It's like you read a book. Unless it's in, you know, uh, like a 
like a trilogy or something like that usually you buy a book and the complete story is there hopefully unless you get it from a library and someone's took a page out which has happened to me a few times well I've took the page out but so I think that this is a solution for this situation is not a solution just an idea welcome the thoughts because you're going to be thinking when you're asleep the idea that we're going into a different state uh, where there's no thinking which we called sleep a place where there's no thinking is untrue so the idea that we need to have a mind where there's no thinking in order to enter this realm of sleep where there's no thinking is not true because you're going from being awake with thoughts to being asleep with thoughts the only difference is you're asleep and you're not consciously thinking your mind is just doing what it needs to do or in some cases what it doesn't need to do just I don't think that every every thought and dream when we're asleep necessarily has any meaning you could just be processing it processing and doing something while your body heals and you get the rest that you need to recuperate for the day ahead So when you take this pressure off yourself, this pressure to be in a zen-like state of total blankness, total, uh, you know, empty mind before being able to fall asleep, it's not needed. In fact, that's the opposite to what sleep is. Because meditation is about focus. It's about being awake, not being asleep. Meditation is very much, it's about awakening. So that Zen mind, that mind where the, you know, the the mind clears itself or you meditate to clear the mind of thinking that meditation is the opposite to sleep what's quite ironic is and I've done meditation thousands of times over the years and uh, some of my best sleeps have come where I've tried to meditate and all I'm doing is thinking because that's part of meditation is the more you focus on reducing your thinking the more thoughts come and so you see it's like the opposite and eventually the, the thoughts do calm down but the amount of times where I'd get 
sidetracked by the thinking and about thinking about something and then my imagination would take over and I'd be asleep. I'd be snoring away. Sometimes even in public places where there's other people meditating. That's why I can't meditate lying down without falling asleep. I've tried, I can't do it. I always fall asleep when I meditate lying down. Always. In fact, I fall asleep whatever I do lying down. Well, not everything, but, you know, generally. So if I'm listening to music, if I'm lying down on the bed, I will fall asleep. If I'm listening to an audio you know, uh, positive, you know, positivity recording or something, I will fall asleep. If I just lie down just to listen to the birds and just to rest my body, if, you know, for a little bit, and uh, I, will, I will fall asleep. It's that association with the bed. I think as well and I lie down and to be fair it's, I think it's the thoughts that send me to sleep I think the thinking because I don't try and push it away When I, it's sometimes it's when I can't eat. I don't care if I go to sleep or not. It's when I do sleep. Because it doesn't matter. Because once you take the importance away. There's no inner fighting going on. Because the fact is you're going to sleep. Your Your mind will... You know, you you will go to sleep at some point because that your mind your mind will demand it, and it's not a conscious thing at all. It will just happen eventually. If you're if you're awake long enough, you will eventually go to sleep, and everybody has. Everybody in history has slept. You know, there's nobody that hasn't slept. And there's something to be said for kind of not caring. Not not caring as in not uh, caring about yourself, but not really worried about it. It's just No, I, don't, I don't. I use the analogy of going to the toilet quite a lot in life, really. And some may think, well, it's a bit childish or it's a bit, a bit grim, but you know what? It's so true. This is just. There's nothing magical about going to sleep. It's no different to doing a poo. Really. And some might say, well, you're not doing it right then, are you? But I don't mean literally it's exactly the same. What I mean is a physical process that your body has to do. It needs to do, and it will do it. You know, the simple fact is, if the best will in the world, don't matter how old you are, if you need to go to the toilet, there, you know, quite often there's a there's a there's a stop clock, 
a timer going and you're going to go to the toilet regardless of where you are because that's a bodily function you need to go to the toilet and you say nope I'm going to hold it in for the next 25 hours some people can I'm sure but it's not fair on your body to do that it's not fair on your pants either Sleeping is just a bodily function, like eating or going to the toilet. Thinking is just a bodily function. Thinking is created by your mind, but created by your brain. Your brain creates the thoughts that occur in your mind it's thinking it's from your brain it's organic just like going to the toilet or eating or your blood pumping around your body your digestive system working you know, your pancreas, your liver, your kidneys, your heart, your lungs, all that stuff, all that good stuff works naturally and organically. And it doesn't need your attention for them to work. Generally, I'm not obviously there, there might be medical conditions and stuff, but it's still out of your conscious control. These are automatic things, sleeping is automatic. But basically, we're doing the equivalent by going to bed and giving ourselves a hard time. I shouldn't be thinking this. I sh my brain's too active. I shouldn't be thinking about this. I should be, you know, I need to go to sleep now. I need to go to sleep. Those kind of thoughts is sabotaging ourselves. That's like holding your breath for too long in between breaths so that the natural flow of breathing gets disrupted and you're doing it purposely. Something that works fine already. The breathing works fine already. You breathe in you breathe out at whatever tempo your body and brain requires. So maybe put a bit more trust in your brain. That part of you that looks after you unconditionally does everything for you, controls well, if your brain keeps you alive. So the one thing you can have the most trust in is your brain. So you're basically walking around with this guardian angel from the day you're born your brain, always looking out for you, always protecting you, keeping you alive, keeping you safe. So why not trust it with sleeping? If you can trust it with breathing, if you can trust it with your heart, 
your lungs, your kidneys, your liver, your pancreas, your digestive system. If you can trust your brain to keep you alive, why can't you trust it? Don't put trust in its ability to just sleep. Trust it for sleep, if you trust it for life, you trust your brain for life, literally. Having some trust for sleep seems like a really obvious thing. And these are just some ideas some suggestions, some thoughts that may be useful. And the good thing about thoughts and ideas is they sink in. allow these thoughts and ideas to sink in. Really allow these facts, the facts, to sink in and to become a part of you. this reality and just notice how it changes the way you feel and think when it comes to bedtime when it comes to time to sleep because something will feel different something will feel different And this might not even be so obvious. Because even when you get to the end of this recording, something will feel different. You might not be able to put your finger on it. Something, it's like something's slightly changed. Something's changed within you. And you might not be quite aware of what it is but you feel it you really feel it feel a sense of it you may feel lighter within yourself more relaxed and that's standard to feel more relaxed after listening to my voice To be fair, I'd say it's probably normal to feel relaxed after just listening to anybody talking. If you just take some time out, away from television, away from people, away from music. Although I do like music and television. But to take a little bit of time out. I think I could be reading a a book or something and it could be fairly relaxing. But this is about the content of what I've said. those changes just sometimes things happen really quickly the change is just instant and 
it can be surprising. It's like, whoa, how? How can listening to this Mr. Jason, how can listening for 50 minutes or an hour to this bloke talking about stuff, how can that have a positive effect Now, well, basically, we're all, we're all suggestible, we're all affected by what we see, what we hear, what we experience has an effect on us, because we're humans, we're alive, we're Just, this is the way it is. So, by pressing the play button on this podcast, this recording, you've kind of set a signal to your brain to absorb what you've heard me say. And to put that into action unconsciously. So there's nothing for you to do. But it is something that you may think about. The things I've said. Even if it's just the sentence, sleeping is as natural as pooing. To remember to be kind to yourself when you're lying in your bed. Now, I'm going to bring this weekly sleep hypnosis session to an end. I realised that maybe a lot of people will be listening to this whilst being in bed and maybe have actually fallen asleep. So I'm going to, I'm going to gently bring this to an end then I'm going to see you speak to you next Friday when there will be a new recording sweet dreams